wondered what it was like in the days when the West was young? Let me tell you about someone who lived in the glory days of the West. There were two main types of women in the West, those who followed the rules and were proper, and those who made their own rules. One of the most famous improper women of the West was Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane was rough and tumble, who preferred the company of men to that of women. She carved a name for herself in a place that was hard on anyone who lived there. Her life was hard, but full of fun and adventure. There are three parts to every story, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Obviously, the beginning is the person's life and childhood. The middle is the rest of their life, and the end is their death. Calamity there we go. was born as Martha Jane Canary on May 1st, 1852. According to Duncan, Duncan Aikman's book, Calamity Jane and the Lady Wildcats, Martha Jane grew up wild, following the example of her wildcat mother. In 1865, the family moved by wagon train from Missouri to Virginia City, Montana, and her mother, Charlotte, died in Blackfoot, Montana, 1866. They buried her there. From Virginia City, they moved on to Salt Lake City, Utah, where her father, Robert, farmed until he died a year later in 1867. After that, Martha took over as head of the family and took her brothers and sisters, she had two younger brothers and two sis three sisters, all younger than her, to Fort Bridger, Wyoming, arriving May 6th. 1868. From there, they took the train to Piedmont, Wyoming. Martha Jane never got much formal schooling. A website called Women in History says of Calamity Jane, Martha Jane set herself apart from other women in that she could work and socialize with hard and tough frontiersmen. Many of them thought her as one of the guys. In Jane's autobiography, she states that in 1870, she went to Fort Russell and joined up with General Custard, although it's more likely it was actually General George Cook. In the spring of 1872, they were ordered to the Mercy Percy Indian outbreak, where Jane says she earned her name by saving Cap uh, Captain Egan. In 1875, she was then ordered to the Black Hills to protect miners, as that country was controlled by the Sioux Indians, and the government had sent in soldiers to protect the lives of the miners and settlers in that section, and then went to at Fort Laramie. Jane's next adventure was to swim the Platte River at Fort Fetterman, bearing important dispatches. It was a 90-mile ride, both wet and cold, and she became severely ill. Jane says of that time after being ill, When able to ride, I started for Fort Laramie, where I met W.M. Hickok, better known as Wild Bill, and we started for Deadwood, where we arrived about June. Aikman's book says of this association, Calamity could ride like a road agent, wear men's clothes without mincing, flourish two guns like a desperado, drink at any bar in the West without questions of feminine mannerisms, and was already more of a celebrity in her own right than that of Colorado Charlie, Bloody Dick, and two unknowns combined. Which he says is the only reason why Bill even associated with her in the first place. Women in history states, as far as Jane's ability was again as concerned, she did wear them and was apparently quite familiar and skilled with them. No evidence exists she ever ruthlessly killed anyone. According to biographer Robert Bolt, on one occasion, reported in the Bozeman, Montana, Avent Courier, the cowboys in a saloon in Oaks, North Dakota, began to chaff her. Canary smiled, whipped out two revolvers, shouting, Dance, you tender feet, dance! Dance they did with much vigor. Calamity Jane was not a person to be trifled with, concluded the Bozeman newspaper. As to the story of her name, well, no one really knows the truth. As I mentioned, Jane claims that she was awarded her name by give, saving the life of a Captain Egan, who said, Captain Egan, on recovering, laughingly said, I name you Calamity Jane, the hero heroine of the Plains. I have borne that name up to the present time. However, Eggman claims that she never saved Egan's life and that Calamity was associated with her because she carried guns ostentatiously and invited it. The St. Paul Dispatch wrote, she got her name from a faculty she had of producing a ruction at any time and place on short notice. As for men, in Jane's autobiography, it says she married Clinton Burke in August 1885 and had a daughter October 1887. In later years, a woman came forward claiming to be said daughter, but it is very unlikely. I have surmised that Jane liked men very much, but they just didn't see her in the same way. Says Aikman, Calamity had talked exhaustively about being a scout and a rescuer of captains, but actually had been an amusingly rakish camp follower and a kind-hearted demi mondaine with an exceptional passion for plains life and male abundance. She's, her chosen life certainly offered more than she bargained for. 
Jane's friend, Wild Bill, was killed in August 1876 by a man named Jack McCall. Jane claims he was hanged in Yankton, while Aikman's book claims that Jane herself killed McCall a few years later. The glory of the Old West started dying around the 1890s. But as she shrank into a region character at home, her fame grew everywhere else. She was a man among men, says Aikman, and even though she was ill, the day before she died she was out drinking. Just like always. Jane died August 1st, 1903 in Terry, South Dakota on the 27th anniversary of Wild Bill's murder and supposedly said, bury me beside Wild Bill, the only man I'd ever loved. And so she was. So when, when did Martha Jane choose what her life would be? Was it as a child watching her mother doing exactly as she wished? Or did she choose it all? I think the point is not that she chose it, but that she chose to live it to the fullest. Sadly, Calamity Jane's story is over, but ours are just beginning.